a little, little convenience store, not a Hux or a Casey's, but just an old-fashioned store. And they had a Coke machine outside. I didn't like Coke, never did like Coke. And in years to come, I finally had to acquire a bit of a taste for Coke, but I still don't care for Coke. I don't care for Pepsi. Don't care for Squirt. Don't care for the other stuff. But they had a machine there that had this new drink out, and I'm just a kid on my bicycle. It was called Dr. Pepper. And I'm telling you, I thought, I'll, I'll risk whatever, nickel or dime, whatever it was back in those days to get you a bottle, and they pop off the cap. And I'm here to tell you, you talk about love at first sight. I didn't have to learn to like it. No one had to tell me on TV how good it was. One swig, and I was a Dr. Pepper fan for life. Now, do not bring me Dr. Pepper. I don't need it. It's not good for me. I've drank more than I should have. I didn't say that to get Dr. Peppers to me. I know how this works. If I brag on chocolate-covered peanuts, I get them. I do not need them. Do not want them. But... I tasted and I saw. You know, some things in life that we get hooked on, and I could say I've, I've, in my time I've been addicted to Dr. Pepper. When you bring a, drink a two-quart bottle a day, you're addicted to that stuff. I don't need that. It's not good for me. Tastes good, but not good for me. You know, people, and other things that are addictive in life, some, you know, some, I, I, I'd just be curious if anyone ever took a first swig on a cigar and they really and thoroughly enjoyed it. Or even things like liquor and stuff. It, you know, really, people try it because it's the big thing to do. They want to be a big person. The peer pressure, it's the social environment they're around. Just to say everything we ever tried that we get addicted to was just great. The first time, I believe, is probably not the case. But you can learn to like it. The psalmist gives us a challenge today. To get to a place before the Lord, that we can give him an honest opportunity to touch our lives. And I'm going to come to you just for a few short morning minutes this morning to speak to you about tasting and seeing that God, he is good. In Psalms 34th chapter and verse 8, the psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Blessed is the man who what? Trust him. He that tastes and sees. I've noticed that our, our little grandson, you know, when Landon was smaller, you could stick about anything in his mouth, and sometimes he didn't know the difference, and he'd wall it around in his mouth. Not so now. He knows there's a difference from zucchini and a candy bar. <laughs> a big difference. And I've noticed he would use at least four of his five senses to figure out if this is a new food he wants to try. I'll say, here, try this, Landon. He'll look at it sometimes. He'll just look at it and shake his head, no. He's not tasted it. He's not tried it. It just doesn't look like something sweet and nice to him. I'll say, try it. And then Papa will kind of put it on his mouth because I'm trying to get him to eat a, a green pepper or eat something healthy for him. I'll put it on my mouth, wall it around a bit, swallow it, go, mmm. He hears my mmm, but he's not mmm yet on the inside. <laughs> and if I'm really persistent, I'll get him and he'll look at it. And then he'll handle it, and then touching it. And then he'll put it up close to his nose and smell it and sniff it. And then if he's bold enough, he'll stick out that little tongue like a little lizard tongue, give a little smack, and smack his lips. At that point, it's either in or it's done for. Tasting, testing, and seeing. And the psalmist said, if you could just get a good taste of God, God, you're going to find out how good, good can be. Before I can finish this message today, I, I must take a moment to back up a few verses in Psalms 34 to verse 4, one of my favorite passages in the Bible. And I must tell you this, you can never come to a place that you truly give God a good test, taste, test, until you've come to a place that you trust him. If you're trying to put one little toe in the deep end of the pool and try to see if you like it or you don't like it, you're not getting in. Until you give God a good chance, that cannot happen in your life. Until you come to a place, you will trust him. The psalmist said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my what? My, my fears. Many of you know that 
I have said this many times, my first subject, my first topic, my first preaching message came from Psalms 34. It was birthed out of an experience that I had at a time when I had a serious eye injury. I was in St. Louis Hospital, and in two weeks, I was supposed to preach my first message behind the pulpit of the Benton Church of God. And I was in a terrible situation, in a lot of pain. I had three serious staph infections in my eye. My cornea had been eaten away. I'd already been told I needed a cornea transplant. That was only if they could save my eyeball. And I would go on to preach my first sermon from this 34-4 text in Psalms about the Lord delivered me from all my fears. I would preach that first message wearing sunglasses because of the condition of my eyes, not to be cute or not to be funny. And there are people in this house today that were there for that sermon. You know the old Amazing Grace song that says, I once was blind, but now I see. I did call on the name of the Lord in churches and many churches, and this church prayed for a miracle touch of God to heal my eyes. But I came to a revelation place in God, and it went something like this. Before I could see the hand of God move to my behalf, I had to come to an honest place where I understood what unconditional love was from me to him. He's already offered that from heaven to us, to mankind. He sent his son, died on the cross for sin, that all that would believe on him shall be saved. But I come to you to tell you in that hospital bed, while I was in pain and suffering and days were clicking by and the devil is telling me you'll never preach that first sermon. While I went through the ordeal of all that went with having a serious eye injury, me and God got serious. You see, the biggest issue at hand that day was not about whether I would see or not see. The biggest thing on the platter that day for me in my life was, was I going to preach? Was I going to pastor? Was I going to minister for the Lord Jesus Christ? That was the biggest, bigger battle on hand. And when I came to a place, and this scripture is what spoke into my heart, and what the Lord brought me revelation, and I finally prayed a sincere prayer like this. I said, Lord, if I'm seeing, I'm going to preach and pastor for you and if I'm blind I'm going to preach and I'm going to pastor for you and he knew that I meant it it was that unconditional love without strings and bargaining and deals with God you know an amazing thing happened I preached that first sermon wearing sunglasses but the reality is I never had surgery I never had a corner transplant I never had medical procedures but by the grace of God he healed my eye restored my old cornea put it all back together again that's why I shout today I can't turn back on him he's done too much for me once you come to that place that God can get the fear out of your life someone had said an acronym for fear is false evidence appealing real well there's times that's the case the devil uses smoke and mirrors and deception perceptions to make you think things that are not as they are but I'm here to tell you when I was in the St. Louis hospital that was not a perception about a bad eye that was not a false fear about concerns about sight or blindness they were as real as real could be but I find out the Lord he is good the Lord he is faithful I find out when his hand is upon you and you put your trust in him the enemy might have attacked through some circumstances of an accident to affect my eye and to cause me to doubt God. But when I came to a place that I said, you know what? I'm going to let my faith be bigger than my fears and I'm going to put the side stuff on the side and focus on the main thing. Jesus, he is Lord. He is my master. He's the one that called me. He's the one that appointed me. He's the one that will use me. He's the one that will anoint me. He's the one that will equip me. He's the one that will make a way. Put your trust in him and he will come on the seen every time thank you Jesus amen I visited someone in the hospital recently and and the precious man and he was suffering and, and we got to talk and he said you know I'll be 80 years old here in a few days As a matter of fact he and I share the same birthday date in the month of February I found that interesting he said something to me he said you know I wish I had teeth he told me about his tooth problems he said I have to nibble and chew and cut all my food with my front teeth 
and I don't have very many of them. I thought, boy, that, that sounds tough. It, he was like a prophet. You know what? I'd had surgery the next day on one side of my mouth, and I couldn't chew on that side of the mouth. And on the other side of the mouth, I developed a severe tooth problem and I couldn't chew back there. You know what I found myself doing the last week or so? Nibbling and chewing and cutting with front teeth. You don't think I'm not more empathetic to him than I was when he told me about it? Now I'm living it for a few days. The Lord doesn't want us at a place where all we get is a little test and a little nibble. He wants us in a place with him in a relationship where we can take the whole gospel, the whole love, the whole relationship, the whole trip with him. Don't hold back on him. When you get a good taste of God, you'll see how good God is. Amen. Recently, I was up in the north in the neck of the woods where they had some slides that went something like this. Don't feed the bears. I wasn't about to feed bears. I was afraid I might be lunch to start with already. I was in the woods with the bears. There's a sign that someone put up that says, do not feed your fears. Do not feed the doubts. Do not feed the unbelief. I want to add one more thing to that popper theology. You cannot know God. You cannot trust God. You cannot live in faith without unbelief. If you cannot get rid of the guilt... As long as the devil has you feeling guilt in life, there's never going to be a connection with God at the level he intended it. You can go through church for a lifetime and maybe never hear the line that I just said. The devil wants to keep you under condemnation, feeling guilt. So you're always fighting the past. But when you come to a place, when you recognize that red and that white of those flags we wave today represents the blood, covers the black, and you come out white as snow, Jesus saves. He saves to the uttermost. He covers up your life with his righteousness. God the Father never again sees the past of before he cast it into the sea of forgetfulness now you experience acceptance of God now you can walk in the love of God if you're carrying guilt in your life now there's a difference between conviction and condemnation condemnation is of the devil condemnation of the work of the flesh and the mind now conviction is when God makes you feel a reality and guilty about the sin that he's dealt with that's a good thing that's never a bad thing I'll tell you when it becomes bad it's when you say no to conviction and you refuse to submit and you refuse to let God change it you refuse to cover it in the blood then it turns into a worse thing but I've come to tell you today he that walks in faith we have the promises from the word of God that says and Jesus said many a time do not fear he said it to Joseph he said it to Mary he said it to the shepherds he said it to Zach he said it in the Old Testament. He said it in the end. Do not fear. Someone had idle time on their hands and they took the time to add up every time the Bible says do not fear. Something interesting came out of that count. There are 365 times that it says do not fear fear in the Bible. What does that say to you and me? Every day, no matter the circumstance, no matter the valley, no matter the mountain, do not fear. It's never the answer. It's never right. It's never fitting when the flesh says, I can't this day. Faith arises up and says, maybe I can't, but I know he can because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Can you say amen to that? Praise be to God. You know, there's an old famous picture painting about the mighty strong hand of God reaching out to the feeble hand of man, reaching toward heavens by faith to touch God. When you give God the keys to your heart, it's a whole new realm of living. That strong hand is ready. I had to say all that about fear versus faith and belief and trust to get us back to the text for today, Psalms 34 and 8, when he says, You, oh, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. I believe 2016 is a season where the bidding of the Holy Spirit is calling children of God and children of the world to come and find him. I believe he's making it so easy. He's greasing the slide board of grace with the Holy Spirit to attract and appeal and call and put a desire 
in people's heart to want to know God, to come to find him in a new realm and revelation of living. This is a depiction of Jesus on the Mount of Beatitudes when he preached and the crowds that came from everywhere. The theme going across the land was you need to come and see and hear and feel and experience what this man Jesus is bringing to us today in the text when it said oh that's another way of saying come you know if you've discovered something good in life or a good deal or a good product or something joyful you want to tell others oh you need to come in oh you need to try you need to go over here you need to look this up oh means you better come and get it while the getting's good you better get in tune what the spirit is saying amen Back in the old days, there's a TV commercial, a serial commercial, and it had a slogan and a saying, and you'll have to be old to remember this one. I'm here to tell you, this was a long time ago. But the theme was, try it, you'll like it. Try it, that's Mikey, if you remember Mikey, the little brother of the bunch. Let Mikey try it, we'll see what he says about it. The Lord has needed some Mikey's like in this church today to try him, test him, taste him, see that he's good so others can look and see the smile on your face, amen. I'm here to tell you, I don't want to go to the church of the frozen chosen. I don't want to go to the church of the cemetery that's all the blessings were in the past. I don't want to be a place that's quiet as a church mouth. I want to be a place where there's life and love and liberty and hope and people like Jesus because he likes them, amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Try it. You'll like it. Mikey liked it. I'm an eater. I'm here to tell you. And you can't. Isn't it amazing out of all the holiday feasts that a family might put out or go to a smoke? Isn't it amazing how the Thanksgiving feast, it's hard to outdo that one. It's like there's more variety. You, for one thing, you get things you don't get the rest of the year. Sweet potatoes are made in a different way. They got different stuff. They got the turkey. But to have a selection that anything on that table that I enjoy, I can have my fill of. You know what I'm talking about. I've come to tell you what the psalmist said. At the Lord's table, friend, he has put out some soul food that's good for your soul. He's got a love fest that's waiting for you when you partake of his healing word. He brings you help. He brings you restoration. He brings you healing and hope. He'll bring salvation. He'll change your life. He'll make you healthy and whole. Amen. I have one word of warning. You know, testing and trying and tasting, saying, I like this. I, this. I like this. Just because you like something in life doesn't always mean it's good for you, Dr. Pepper being an example. <laughs> we need to taste what God likes. Taste what God likes. He knows what's good for us. He knows what the good stuff is. Even the Bible says the truth that goes something like this. There is pleasure in sin. An undeniable truth. There is a measure, a certain kind of pleasure in sin, but it qualifies that statement by saying what? But for a season, and it will pass. There's an old preacher's story. If you've heard it, bear with me. A woman's in a tragic accident, passes away far too young in life, finds herself at the gate's door. St. Peter meets her there. There's an exchange of greetings, and he says, well, we give you an opportunity you can choose heaven or you can choose hell. She was quite taken back. She said, well, I didn't know it worked like that. And she's thinking in her mind, why wouldn't I choose anything but heaven? And before she can say much, he's got her on an elevator, taking her down, 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 down. She finds up. She walks out of that elevator onto this beautiful, luscious, green golf course. They put clubs in her hand. She's never been a golfer, but she plays a perfect game of golf. Holes in one on every hole. They take her to the clubhouse, and it is the biggest mansion she's ever seen in her life. They put out a spread of food for her. You talk about a feast. She'd never tasted anything so wonderful in all of her born days. They have a big celebration on her behalf, and there is dancing and drinking and fun and merrick, and it is a blast. She even says in her heart, this is the best time I've ever had in my life. The devil walks in the room, and she is shocked. She said, he's really not too bad looking. And he comes around, and he was funny. He made her laugh. She felt good about herself. 
And then she was really taken back when she found out how good a dancer he was. She had the time of her life. St. Peter comes and takes her back up, 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 up and puts her into heaven. He says, now we're going to leave you here for 24 hours. And she was frolicking on clouds and whispical great. It was just wonderful, peaceful, restful. She could play the harp. It was so nice. And after the end of that stay, then St. Peter says, well, what is your choice? And she said, you know what? I'm shocked. I'm going to say this. But I had such a great time in hell. I guess I'll choose hell. Down she goes. The elevator opens up. And all of a sudden, the first thing her nose detects, a foul stench. And she looks through the dust and the smoke, and she sees death all around. She hears the shrieks of Christ. Her skin begins to crawl, and it goes from bad to worse. Then the devil comes out. And she said, how come it's so different? He said, before we were just recruiting you. Now you're on staff here. And we can't laugh too good at that because it says too much truth. Pleasure in sin for a sin. It tasted good for the moment, but it wasn't what was good for us. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back to help assist me. In a moment, I'm going to have an altar invitation, an altar call. We're going to get ready for a baptismal service. And I'm going to ask that all those that came prepared to be baptized in water... Go with Rhonda and Cameron. They're going to take you out the doors and get you prepared and ready. And in a few moments, few minutes, we'll be having a wonderful baptismal service. My message today is taste what God's like. When you taste God and trust God, you'll find that the Lord is always good. The Bible is the best recipe book for our soul. But how many people are fearful and afraid of God? Fearful of a touch of God. Fearful of a worshipful atmosphere because it's strange and unusual and awkward and scary. I understand that. I get that. How many are afraid to cross a threshold line to step out in faith when they have a need in their life and come to trust God and ask God in faith to minister a miracle into their life? But God is a blessing, God. When you test him and taste him and try him, you will find he is always good and he is faithful and I'm going to ask that our prayer warriors from last Sunday and Dan and Carrie and different ones like last Sunday I want you to get ready in a few moments we're going to call you to this altar and just spread across this altar prayer partners waiting to pray for the needs of the people today no matter what the need is miracle help financial salvation whatever the need is we want to pray for your needs today we want you to come and taste God We want you to come and see that he is good and the blessings of God are real. We're going to have a baptismal service in just a moment. The children will be joining back with us in just a few moments. And let me say, after we have an altar invitation, after we have the water baptismal service, just sit tight for a few moments. I've got something to share with you. I believe, for me, it's very, very important. I believe you'll find it very good for you also. Just don't leave after the baptismal service. We'll have a few more moments together. This is an old-fashioned picture of an old water baptism at the river. And we've upgraded to a baptistry tank with clean, fresh water, warm water, comfortable water. And I like warm, comfortable better than the cold water. I've done both. I'm here to tell you. My wife and I, we, we went to the Jordan River, and they had a baptismal day, and we were given opportunity to give in. I did that little toe test taste. It was so cold. I said, I'll rejoice from the sideline. And I watched everybody else get baptized. I missed out on a blessing, I'm sure. There is a true account, and I've heard it different versions in different ways. But out of this church, we're celebrating 100 continuous years of ministry this year. For 100 years, continuous ministry here in the Benton area. Back in the, I I believe around the 30s, they would go out come springtime when they could break the ice and get out to the, the muddy river out here between here and Butner. They'd have some water baptisms. Sister Duty was baptized there. Sometimes they went to the Logan Pond. And there's a story about one, one baptism in particular, and they had hundreds of people ready to be baptized. You know the old song says, give me that old-time religion? 
I want the old time religion where people get saved, sanctified, filled with the Spirit, so committed to God, they'll take that extra step and get baptized in water in obedience to the example that Jesus set before us. Can you say amen to that? I want to see it again. This is our third baptism in less than uh, two and a half months, really about two months. Jesus came that we might have life more abundantly. I'm going to ask the prayer partners that would, and those I spoke with last week, and a few others, if you feel led of the Lord, come and stand across the front of this altar area facing the congregation. And anyone that has a need today or needs a touch of God, we want to pray with you. And prayer partners, if no one comes for a need to be prayed for, you just look across the audience and begin praying for this people. The devil had a taste test for mankind in the garden. It was that fruit, some call it the apple. And man fell for it, but it wasn't good for them. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant living, freedom in him. The psalmist says, oh, come and taste and see that the Lord, he is good. While we prepare for the baptismal service, I'm going to ask that Teresa and then also Missy would help me. They would. Teresa heard from the Lord this week for this church, and I want her to come share her heart with the liberty. The Bible also says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, there's an affirmation. And I've not heard a peep out of Missy, but I want Missy to follow Teresa also with testimony because I believe God is speaking to our hearts and our lives. I believe he's speaking to someone today through this message, the simple message I'm sharing. And then having done so, I'm going to ask Missy to open these altars and invite anyone that wants ministry and prayer to come with some of these prayer partners and they will join with you in faith believing. Come taste God and see that he is good. He saves, heals, delivers, does miracles today. He is a faithful God. He is a good God. The Lord, he is good to him that trusts him. Teresa, if you would, come. Missy, get ready to come if you would. And they'll open up the altar invitation. And then we'll enter into the baptismal service. And then I've got one more special thing for this morning to share with you.